Okay, Tommy, hit me with the news. What did you find out about our cigarettes? Sir, it's bad news. Our research team has found that tobacco is causing lung cancer and that smoking is actually killing people. Well, Tommy, that doesn't sound very good. No, that doesn't look very good at all. No, sir, it isn't. And our research with the public has shown that people are starting to notice they're having breathing issues linked to smoking. Athletes are starting to quit smoking as it's affecting their performance. It's not looking good, sir. Tommy, this is making us millions of dollars. We can't go down without a fight. Ricky, you're the expert on this. How do we trick people into thinking smoking is cool, wholesome, and not bad for their health? Well, sir, that's easy. We find some doctors with loose morals who smoke and would like a bit fame and of course money and we pay them to feature in an advertising campaign promoting cigarettes. Society views doctors as wholesome, trustworthy people. To see them promoting smoking would cast doubts over the potential issues with cigarettes, and the resulting confusion would cause smokers to continue smoking and would encourage non-smokers to consider starting smoking. Vicky, you've done it again. That's a splendid idea. Get on that right away. Well sir, I did actually prepare a few samples of the print advertisements we could be using. Splendid, Ricky. Just, just splendid. And here's something else that we've been working on for the television. What cigarette do you smoke? You'll be interested to know how the doctors of America answered that question. Tens of thousands of doctors. Doctors in all parts of the country, in every state of the union. Doctors in every branch of medicine were asked, what cigarette do you smoke, doctor? In this nationwide survey of general practitioners, surgeons, throat specialists, diagnosticians, and so on, the brand named most was Camel. Yes, according to this survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. Try Camels yourself. Make the one sensible cigarette test. Ricky, run with it. I want this on everyone's TVs as soon as possible. Um, sir, don't you think this is wrong? Cigarettes are killing people. Tommy, 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 don't you worry about it. How about you go grab yourself a coffee? Take a little break. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, Tom, hit me with the news. What did you find out about our beef? Sir, it's bad news. Our research has found that red meat in general is linked with colon cancer. Eating red meat is killing people, sir. Well, that doesn't sound very good, Tom. No, that's not sounding very good. Yes, and market research shows that people are becoming more aware of the slaughterhouses and how we kill the animals to get the beef. Activists have been exposing this for a long time now, and it seems it's finally coming to fruition. The public is starting to eat more plant-based foods, especially now they realize they don't need to eat meat to be healthy. We also found that the public is becoming more environmentally conscious, and they're realizing that animal agriculture is the leading cause of climate destruction, as we are producing the most emissions and destroying the planet. It's just not looking good, sir. Tom, this is making us millions of dollars. We can't go down without a fight. Rick, you're our marketing expert. How do we trick people into thinking eating beef is cool, wholesome, and not bad for their health? Well, sir, it's easy. We just need to find some young people with loose morals who eat beef and want a bit of fame, and of course, a bit of money, and we pay them to feature in an advertisement promoting beef. We show young women working on farms. Young women eating beef. Because society sees young women as more wholesome and trustworthy than young men. Seeing them working on farms would add a whole new element of wholesome to the advertising campaign, and to see them supporting beef would cast doubts over the potential issues with eating beef. Oh, and we absolutely have to include a hippie looking type man also eating beef. Including this hippie looking type man would show that even the hippie types are eating beef. Continuing to cast doubt over who does and doesn't eat beef. The resulting confusion would cause people who are already eating beef to continue to eat beef and would cause people who aren't eating beef to consider starting to eat beef. Rick, You've done it again. It's brilliant. Go ahead and start that project right away. Well, I did already put something together. Here's an advertisement for social media that we've been working on. If the sound of beef sizzling on the grill brings tears of joy to your eyes, you're a real beefetarian. If you have a balanced diet and don't hesitate to order a side of ribeye with your asparagus, you're a real beefetarian. If you support sustainable farming by choosing European beef, you are real beefetarians. Become a beefetarian. And of course, a real beefetarian eats salad too. Enjoy hits from Europe. It's perfect, Rick. Run with it. I want to see this all across social media ASAP. Um, sir, this feels wrong. We're killing thousands of animals. We're destroying the planet. 
and we're encouraging people to ruin their own health? Tom, don't worry about this. How about you go grab yourself a nice pumpkin spice latte, relax, take a break. Uh, okay, so I guess that does sound nice. I'm David Rams, welcome back to another 5 Minute Friday. 5 Minute Fridays are where I go through the last week's news that's related to veganism, the interesting stuff, and I try and go through it within 5 minutes, but it never happens. This week's first story, animal agriculture marketing. It's the gift that just keeps giving, isn't it? We had that Christmas advertisement from the American egg industry with that incredible cringe, and now we have the latest in the lineup of desperate attempts to save a dying industry, the Be a Beefetarian campaign. As much as it's funny to laugh at how pathetic this is, and let's be honest, it's pretty f***ing pathetic, there is a very sinister side to it. Not only are these people advocating for violence towards animals, the idiots running the campaign are spending around 4.5 million euros on it. They're running ads in France, Belgium, and Spain. But not only that, 80% of their funding is coming from the EU. As if it wasn't bad enough that this campaign was promoting violence towards animals. If you're in an EU country, some of the taxes that you pay is going towards 3.6 million euros to help fund that ad campaign. Because promoting something that causes the immeasurable suffering and death of thousands and thousands of innocent animals, something that has also been classed as a group 2A carcinogen, meaning that it probably causes cancer, is a great way for the EU to spend millions of euros, right? Various industries have been lobbying to get themselves into positions of power to influence decisions like this for years. They try to hide the truth and confuse the consumers, and honestly, it kind of works. They did it with tobacco, they're still doing it with alcohol, which, by the way, if you didn't know, it is a carcinogen, and they're doing a very good job of hiding this, and you should really research it. And of course, they're still doing it with animal agriculture. Make sure to share this video with others, so they don't get tricked by this absolute bullshit. Someone who hasn't been tricked by this absolute bullshit is this sixth generation cattle rancher who recently transformed his cattle ranch into a plant-based farm. His name is Richard Trailer, and he spoke out about his decision at a recent summit for ranchers wanting to change their businesses. He said, I used to laugh at veganism and now it's a way of life. I want to listen and learn how to make ranching profitable without having to slaughter. And he also told Veg News, I couldn't be a rancher and environmentalist without being a hypocrite. I needed to walk the walk. You're killing the planet and you're killing yourself. Richard and his wife Cindy made the decision to make this change after they had a cow on their farm that had an injury and they couldn't bring themselves to have her killed. So instead, they contacted Rowdy Girl Sanctuary. They were able to find a home for the cow. Now she's living the rest of her life being cared for in a sanctuary. Being in contact with Rowdy Girl Sanctuary opened a new world to them. The idea that they didn't have to continue doing this and the conversations they had with the people running that place are what convinced them to change their business and change their personal lives too. A cow farmer who took over a farm from his great, great, great grandfather, making the connection, going vegan, and converting his farm from abusing animals to growing plant-based food is a really positive sign for the future. There are some absolute pieces of shit trying to get you to abuse animals, but there are also good people like this who are just one conversation and one bit of influence away from joining you in defending the animals and standing against animal abuse. Just last week in Wales, a new bill came out that makes it illegal to use wild animals in circuses. Leslie Griffiths, the Welsh Minister for Environment, Energy and Rural Affairs, said that this bill will address the ethical concerns of people across Wales by banning the use of wild animals in travelling circuses. The use of wild animals for entertainment in this way is outdated. Wild animals are sentient beings with complex needs and they should not be seen as commodities for our entertainment. This is awesome, obviously, and I'd love to stay positive, but unfortunately, there's something a little bit less positive about this story. You see, this is the same Leslie Griffiths that last year defended meat, saying it was very sustainable. Leslie, eating meat is not necessary. Therefore, eating meat is for pleasure, making eating meat a form of entertainment, meaning sentient beings are being commodified for entertainment when you're breeding them and chopping up their bodies to put them on your plate and eat them. I know consistency and integrity aren't common traits to be found in politicians, but come on. Circus animals and farmed animals experience the world the same. They'd all prefer to live without being exploited for human pleasure. This wild animal ban of circuses in Wales is a drop in the ocean of animal abuse, but it's a drop nonetheless. How long do you think it'll be before the majority of the public demands an end to the egg industry, the dairy industry, or the meat industry? Which one of them do you think is gonna go down first? Let me know in the comments. A huge thank you to the people whose names are flying around the screen right now. I'm not sure where they're gonna be. Maybe they'll be maybe they'll be like here, maybe, or maybe they'll be they'll be here. 
They're on the screen right now. A huge thank you to all of you. This is my Patreon team. These are the people that make it possible for me to continue making these videos and continue putting out all of this content. It is hard work. It does take a lot of time and it is not possible without your contributions. So thank you so, so much. If you'd also like to contribute to my work, then join my Patreon team. You can join for as little as $1 a month, which may not seem like a lot to you, but if 100 people do that, that's $100. It adds up and it really is a lot for me. It is literally how I can survive doing this. It's how I'm living. You can join by going to patreon.com forward slash David Rams and the link is in the pinned comment down below. I'll be putting out some new and exclusive content that is not going to be on my public YouTube channel, live streams and videos on other topics that are a little bit more personal and topics that I won't cover publicly. No, there's nothing new. There's no OnlyFans stuff. It's nothing like that. It's just stuff that I'm not going to be doing publicly. If you're interested in that, if you're interested in joining me with some more personal topics and some things that I won't be discussing publicly, sign up with my Patreon because that's the only way you'll be able to access it. This is going to be Patreon exclusive content. So if you want to support my work and gain access to that content, click the link in the pinned comment. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in the live stream on Sunday.